All right. Good evening, Life Source Church. Hopefully you've turned on, uh, you know, your, your video, and hopefully you turned on the screen, hopefully you turned on your phone, hopefully you turned on something, and you turned to our live stream. Uh, tonight, you know, is uh, going to be an evening of just taking uh, some time to talk about a few subject matters that I know are on each and every one of your hearts and minds, and then maybe share a little bit of a thought with you tonight. Um, I know that uh, some of our youth are online. I know they're gathering together in a couple of different spots to, to have some time of Bible study. And also, hey to the youth, hey to every single one of you adults that are here tonight. Uh, the children, some of the children might be lo looking online also. Um, but tonight, uh, I want to talk to you on a thought process that sort of says this. What a difference a few days can make. Um, when you stop and you consider about the reality of the things that have been going on and how this whole world, this nation, has been turned upside down over these past couple of days due to circumstances that are beyond our control, you have to sit down and really realize that in a matter of a short period of time, circumstances can change. Some for the better, some for the worse, but in the great thing of all that's going on, uh, even though things may seem to be turned upside down, but for God's church, we know this hasn't really taken God by surprise. We know that even though there's circumstances that we don't understand, we need to recognize that he is not just aware of it. I'd be inclined to say he's been, been behind some of the orchestration of all that's been going on. And, and so we need to recognize that. So we also need to recognize that these times that are ahead of us, uh, that we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold in essence, they shouldn't take us that way also. Why? Because our trust and our faith is in the Lord. It's just that simple. Uh, again, tonight we're doing something very unusual. I've really never done this before. I'm sitting here looking at our, our seats. And with the exception of Brother Jimmy and Sister Lucinda, they, they're all empty, you know. And they're down here tonight. I want to give a shout out to them for coming down and being with me tonight. Uh, and Brother Jimmy to handle all the sound and everything else like that. So you all just thank them, you know, this Sunday concerning that. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, here we are. Because we're, we're going to trust the Lord and our faith is in the Lord. But speaking of faith, um, there may be some of you, actually I know that there are probably not just some of you, probably many of you who have sort of mixed feelings about having to live stream our services uh, for right now instead of meeting together to have services as we have all of our lives. Again, this is the very first time that I've ever really experienced doing what we're doing here uh, and not having things, you know, with an audience sitting here, the church there, uh, praising God and so on and so forth. Um, but I, I'm sure that it may not, you know, even though you may not want to do so or be here doing it the way that we're doing, uh, out of fear or circumstances like that, there may be some that even are questioning the reality, well, you know, where's your faith? Why aren't we down here gathered together and just having time in the Lord? Uh, and and pers personally, myself, part of me doesn't disagree with that. Uh, so I thought I'd ought to share my heart for a few minutes before I go ahead and share a few thoughts uh, scripturally with us tonight that hopefully will set your heart at ease and bring about the reality of what we need to understand tonight as to why tonight we've started live streaming and, and we'll probably be doing that until such time as the government, um, you know, our president, but really the government uh, makes the determination that it's safe to go back into our, you know, into our classrooms, go back into our uh, sanctuaries and have service that way. Churches around the country uh, you know, a live streaming right now, tonight and then on Sunday mornings because they recognize the need. Um, honestly, and, and I'll share my heart with you here, that up until Tuesday night, uh, my intention was for us to have services. Have service here tonight, have a service here this Sunday because as you all well know, as you're a part of this church here, that this Sunday was going to be the very last Sunday that we all head together here in our sanctuary before we move on to the new locations and all that God has in store for us. We were going to have dinner on the grounds. We had, we had a great time planned. We had a special praise and worship service going to be after, after the service and all. And now all of a sudden, everything's changed. I know that, you know, that's upset some, you know, some, and that's a possibility, I understand that. Uh, there was, the, there'd be some, and I, I, I hear these things, you know, they come across my desk, so to speak, that there's a, a lack of faith, a lack of trust in God. Uh, we should be down here, and so on and so forth. And honestly, part of me does not disagree with that. But 
here's an essence of what happened to me a couple of days ago. Um, we're all entitled to our opinions, but honestly, I, I prefer to refer to what God instructs us to do during these times and do that instead of what it is that maybe I want to do or what it is that you might do or what we think we should do based on what we think we understand about God's Word. Uh, so I want to get that cleared up first and foremost because uh, I think that's a very important thing because one of the things I don't ever want to have is division within the body of Christ. And I'm trying to avoid that at all times, no matter what's going on, no matter what anybody might think. So, even though we're entitled to our opinion, really and truly there's only one stance that any of us should ever take, and that's what God's Word has to say about subject matter, and stand on that. God talks about faith, there's no question about it, you know. Uh, we all have our opinions, and, and opinions are sort of like belly buttons. Every one of us has one, and our opinions value, you know, have value, um, but really they're generally our own values, but our opinions become valuable only when they line up with God's Word. And that's the essence of what I want to talk about for the next couple of minutes and then move on into some thought process to share with you tonight. So in light of God's Word, let me share with you why our board of elders decided that the sound scriptural and spiritual response to this dilemma is to hold our services live streaming as we're doing right now until things seem to change for the better. There is a scriptural purpose behind this. The answer, I discovered it just the other night as I was listening to our general overseer, uh, but Dr. Hill, talk about this on Monday night uh, on Facebook with the entire Church of God in essence. Uh, and they talked about him and some other of the other gentlemen there. They got talking about several subject matters. And in the process of it, one of the things that struck home with me was somebody shared Romans 13 verses 1 through 2. And he said this to the church, and, he, and Paul said this to the church, and he says this to you and me. Uh, he said this to the church in Rome, and he said it with great significance because it's something that you and I have need of understanding. Back in their day, of course, they were subject to a, a, a ro ruling power in Rome. And, of course, uh, the Roman soldiers and all that, they were authoritarians. They, they took charge of things, and they didn't treat your people very well. But even in spite of that, Paul talking to the church, he, made the, he said these words. You might want to turn to, you know, the, the book of Romans, chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Uh, I'm going to be reading out of the NIV to you. It says, everyone, now hear what I'm saying. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. That's our government. For there is no authority except that which God has established. In other words, our government, the people within the government, God established every single one of them. We need to recognize that. We may not agree with everything, but we need to recognize that and recognize the authority. It says, then he goes on, he says, the authorities that exist have been established by God. He really reaffirms that point, and he does that with a purpose. Because you and I, even though we may not like certain aspects of the things that go on in the government, nonetheless, God himself has established them in that place of authority. And so Paul went on, he said these words, he says, consequently... He who rebels against the authority, and let me add my words there, in other words, goes against what the government says we are to do. And the reference here for us tonight is the fact that our, our government, our president, and our government that have sat down and put their heads together and things, said that there's, you know, in essence, a quarantine. That if, you know, you, if you're going to meet, they can only be groups of 10 or less people. Of course, we meet far more than that, especially on Sundays. We meet, when we meet, we have a minimum of 50, sometimes as much as 75 people in the sanctuary here. So, needless to say, as I wanted to meet and have that this coming Sunday, as I read these scriptures, I went on and read this. He says, consequently, he who rebels against the authority is, listen to this, is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so, and here's really the catch, at least it was for me, they will bring judgment on themselves. Those are profound words. Uh, honestly, and let me say this without trying to offend anybody, that scares the hell out of me. All right, it does. Because I take God's word very seriously. Uh, I believe that he, up, he upholds it, and he, up, and he holds us up to it in the midst of all things. So, you know, as these being powerful words of instruction, and, and hopefully I think you would agree with that, that they are, and hopefully you'd grasp a hold and not read anything into it other than reading it as it is, that being subject to those who are in authority over us, you and I have a responsibility to do that. 
Now, as I read those scriptures, here's where my thoughts went. As the shepherd of this congregation, my responsibility is to protect you. That's part of my responsibilities. I don't take that lightly, as many of you know. Some of you question it, but nonetheless, as you, you know, you should know that. And in that aspect of things, my desire is that not one of us would subject ourselves or bring judgment of our, on ourselves for any reason. Sometimes we don't understand what the Scripture is telling to us, and we may go into a direction and make statements about things, you know, like some people I've heard have made statements, you know, well, it's been a lack of faith, you know, we should be meeting, and so on and so forth. Again, I don't disagree with part of what they're saying, but when you couple it with what the rest of the Scripture says, you have to understand that we have to follow what God says to do. And God's very clear, crystal clear as a matter of fact, in Romans 13 verses 1 and 2, how and where we have to stand on such, you know, way, uh, matter. So these are powerful words of instruction. Hopefully you'd agree to that. So those who serve on our board in an act to protect you and to, and to keep some of you from being, bringing judgment on, you, on yourself, especially to those who consider themselves to maybe be spiritually mind, uh, minded uh, and, and unbeknownst to themselves, you know, they, they bring in judgment on themselves because they go contrary to what the fullness of all the Scripture has to say. They may want to debate it, but nonetheless, I just read to you exactly what the Scripture has to say. They turn around by, you know, making a determination we should gather together, we should have 40, 50, 60 people come in here, we should have service. Great. We're walking contrary, actually we're walking rebellious to what our government has told us to do at this point in time. When that changes, we'll change with it. It's just that simple. So hopefully you recognize that. And, 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 and you know, we felt as we joined together, we felt it would be prudent, it would be scriptural, and above all else, absolutely an act of faith decided to do, you know, as an act of faith decided to do what the scripture commands us to do. Obey those and rule over us and not have service. This is why we chose that route instead of what some consider to be a lack of faith. Trust me, it's not a lack of faith by any stretch of the imagination. Again, if I did what I personally wanted to do, we'd be here. But I have to be subject to those who are ruling and authority over me. Maybe you don't, but I choose to be. Because I don't want to bring judgment not only on myself, but I don't want judgment to happen to anybody here in this church. So with that in mind, we need to sort of, you know, move forward. Um, we need to allow God to have his way within our hearts and lives, and we need to recognize that God has a plan. I mean, I know God has a plan. I know that we're a part of his plan. And in the midst of that, I know that he wants to accomplish some things that are great in us and through us. So we need to stop, take a deep breath, so to speak, and realize that even though we're not meeting as we want to meet over these week, weeks ahead, might be just one week, might be three weeks, five weeks, I've heard all manner and sort of reports. But as we are faithful one unto another, and more, most, and more than that, faithful unto the Lord, will turn around and realize that not only what a difference a few days can make in circumstances and situations, but how you and I act during these days makes all the difference with regards to what, you know, truly goes on. So, if you've made comments, you know, that maybe you shouldn't have made, and, not, you know, I'm just throw this out here, and you recognize that you shouldn't have said something, well, what you need to do is you need to, to the measure in which you send it out, you need to also apologize in the same measure. You need to take care of circumstances. You need to swallow pride if pride is the problem. And, and you need to do that because, again, what Paul was talking about, and you and I need to recognize, he was talking about a rebellious spirit. And we need to be subject to those who are in rule over us. You may not agree with it, but nonetheless, that's what God says. And he says he's the one that placed them in authority. So the bottom line is this. If you choose to rebel, really the one you're rebelling against is not the authority. You're rebelling against the one who put them in authority. You're rebelling against God. So I just throw that out there because I think it's important. I share it. Why? Because I care about everyone here in this congregation. And I don't want anybody to fall into the snare of the enemy and allow the enemy to have his way. So, again, these are powerful words of instruction. 
There's something that we need to consider. It's not a lack of faith. It really is faith, trusting that God knows what he's doing and allowing God to be the one to direct our very steps. So, before I take a few minutes to share some teaching tonight, uh, over these next couple of minutes, um, I wanted to mention to you that we're going to start having service. You should have all been called. Most everybody has been uh, in the midst of things about starting to have service online every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Not our usual time, 1030. We're going to have it at 10 o'clock. Part of my reasoning for that is we don't know quite how long these online services will, uh, will last. Chances are they'll last not quite as long as a normal service does. And most likely we'll probably be done in service around 1130 at the very latest. It's an hour and a half. Um, don't quite know. What our plan is, is that we're going to meet. We've got a, a location that is going to be set up uh, once we're out of here because this Sunday really will be the very last Sunday we will be broadcasting from our sanctuary here. I've got plans set up to go into a studio uh, for us to do it from that point on until such time as the Lord tells us to do otherwise. Uh, the doors are open, I should say, to do otherwise. And, but we're going to start having Sunday service at 10 o'clock in the morning. You can sit around if you like in your pajamas and you can have a great time. You can get your cup of coffee, sit down there and not worry about a thing. I mean, maybe I'll come in my pajamas. Who knows? You know, it might be a good time. I mean, I'll try it if you will. Just let me know. Uh, but the point being is that, you know, we're going to do that on Sundays at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then every single Wednesday night at 7 p.m., uh, hereafter until the governing authorities lift this ban, you know, so I, I hope you'll band with us as a church. Come into one mind, one accord, no discord, and allow God to lead and guide us so that we can truly fulfill, you know, uh, our ministry and fulfill the very things that God wants to do. See, I'm excited about this different way of doing ministry. It's something totally new to me. Um, I mean, we live stream every week, but never from this perspective. But in the midst of it all, you know, we're going to do that until such things get back to normal. So we need to all be all in. Uh, you know, no sense in grumbling or groaning or complaining because I'm mindful of what God, you know, did with the nation of Israel when they kept complaining. Uh, I don't want you wandering out in the wilderness for 40 years and dying out there and we burying you. I don't want us to be able to go forward and have a great time in the Lord. Amen? Because see, that's what God looks for. Can I say this to you? Sometimes God puts us in difficult positions him already knowing what's in our hearts to expose our hearts from the standpoint of how rebellious maybe we are so that maybe he can change our hearts and get it where it needs to be because see God never blesses rebellious hearts never he works with them he tries to change them he tries to reshape them he tries to remold them he tries to mold them into the image of Jesus and when he can do that that's when his blessings flow so I encourage you from that kind of a standpoint. So one, one last thought before I, I take a few minutes and I share with you. Many may be wondering how they should take care of giving their tithes and their financial gifts uh, to the church because the work of the church goes on. It always has been and it always will be. And God has entrusted to us, uh, the church, the ability to be able to support his work. He gives, us that, give us, gives that to us as a blessing. Um, so I would say this to you, and I think I've got it that'll come up on here um, when we recognize that this is all about faith, and I got talking, I should have pulled that slide up. Shame on me that I didn't. But in Romans 13, uh, 1 and 2 was the scripture we were going to, and again, I got ahead of myself, got out of tune with it all. Man, I'll tell you what, I'm really good tonight, aren't I? But the point being this, that in the midst of those scriptures, there's things that you and I can do, but also within the midst of it, we need to recognize that when it comes to giving, there's two different ways that we have things set up. You can go into our website, www.lifesource.org, two S's in that. Click on the button at the very bottom of our homepage. Once that happens, there's a page that'll pop up. It'll tell you how you can give, and it'll, it'll walk you through the instruction to be able to do that. Just follow the instructions, give, you know, as the Lord directs you, and that'll be good. Second way is that you can mail your gifts to, you know, to the church. Most of you know our location and our address here, but that's changed. Because obviously we're going to be out of here. Up on the slide up there, there's a P.O. Box. It's P.O. Box 2016, Tarpon Springs, Florida, 34688. When you recognize that, we understand that, and we allow God to have his way within the midst of all that, and you and I are faithful to that, 
your church will not just survive, it'll thrive. And as it thrives, we'll accomplish what the kingdom of God has us to do. And all of us will be blessed in a blessing. Again, let me say this. I am excited about what God has in store. Um, I don't know what's going on in some respects. I say that quite openly. I have since the very beginning. Um, I thought we'd already be in the new location long before this. I thought we'd have the place picked out long before this. And it's not due to a lack of effort. We've had many people working extremely hard to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. But in the midst of it all, things have happened. I believe God's hands upon it all. I know God has a plan. And in the midst of it, as you and I allow God to have his way, as he leads us through, so to speak, what seems like a wilderness right now, that in the midst of that, he'll bring us to the promised land that he has. And in the midst of that, we'll accomplish what it is he has, you know, for us to do. So again, let me say to you that in the midst of these scriptures, going back to it just for a second, it says, you know, everybody must submit himself to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. They've been established by God himself. I know that. You need to know it if you don't. He says, consequently, he who rebels against the authority, in other words, goes against what the government says we are to do. They are rebelling against what God has instituted. In essence, it's a rebellion against God. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Powerful scriptures. Powerful words. So as we focus ourselves, we walk in obedience to what God tells us to, and we allow God to have his way, things will change always for the better. So with that sort of said, I want to take a few minutes tonight, and, and I want to exhort you during the times that we're in. From the writings of Solomon in Psalm number 91. I feel that this, the 91st Psalm is, is, is quite appropriate for this very season that we're living in today. And, and it really is designed to be able to bring comfort to those of us who are troubled and peace to those who, who, who truly need to have peace. Because it's only in understanding what God is saying do we truly find the peace that we need in life. So if you have your Bible with you, if you have an app, because I'm not going to bring up the verses, but I am going to talk to you about them. Uh, you might want to pull it up on your phone or whatever it is, you know, that you have tonight. I, I want to say to you, that I want to say some things to you that hopefully is going to bring some peace to your soul and strengthen your heart tonight that truly I think is going to give you a focus of what it is that you have need of tonight so that in the midst of whatever you might be facing tonight, God himself is going to bring you peace. Now before I share that, as I get ready to share that, I want, to, I want us to pray for a minute as a congregation. I want us to ask God to, to truly direct our steps to turn his blessings upon us in a mighty way. Keep us all in one mind and one accord. I want to pray for you uh, as you pray for me. Uh, there's, you know, all, you know, there's not too many. I know there's people that are out there in need uh, that we need to keep in mind. There's those that are going through circumstances. There are people that have lost their jobs. There's people in our congregation that have needs. I've had a couple of people call in, like Sister Sonia called in about a friend of hers that has a need, uh, lost a job because of these circumstances that are going on. Um, hopefully this is not the, the, hopefully this isn't something that's going to keep growing, hopefully it's going to diminish, and people are going to get back to work. But we need to truly lift these needs up. You might be one of those people that are facing circumstances. If you are, you need to call in. You know, you can text in. You can do uh, just about anything you have need of in that respect so that we can keep you in prayer. But I want us to, to have a blanket prayer, if you will, asking God to truly touch us as a body of believers, cause it to come into one mind and one accord if we're not, and in the midst of it, you know, touch us in such a measure that truly we become all that God wants us to be. And we hear what it is God is truly saying that he wants to accomplish in our hearts and our lives and use us. Would you jo join me in prayer before I share a short word, short word with you? Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we bow in your presence tonight and we exalt and praise and magnify your name. 
I thank you for each and every one of my brothers and my sisters, those that are watching online, uh, those that wish they could be here, and, and each and every one in such a measure and a way that truly, Lord, you knowing what lies ahead, you knowing what's going behind the scenes in all these circumstances, you knowing what you are in the midst of accomplishing, that we, as your children, would be able to have a heart and a mind to comprehend and understand what it is you're trying to do. That we'd be able to have eyes, spiritual eyes, to be able to see what it is that we need to see, not only with inside of ourselves, but within the midst of what you're trying to accomplish in your kingdom, so that you can use us as instruments to do that. I also pray, Lord, that you would bring nothing but a great peace upon every single one of my brothers and my sisters that are uh, live streaming here tonight and those that I even aren't able to be, so on and so forth, that, Lord, that you, they would feel your presence even now. And in the midst of feeling your presence, they would have the peace that passes all understanding. And that in that peace, they would see you for who you are, that you are in control, they are in the palm of your hand, and that, Lord, you go before us as only you can. Lord, I speak peace. The same peace Jesus spoke upon his disciples. Let that same peace overshadow each and every one. Let it overtake them in such a measure that in the midst of whatever they're going through, no matter what it is that they're facing, that they see you high and lifted up. They see you exalted, as Isaiah saw you in, 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 in his book. And in the midst of that, that truly their lives are changed in such a measure that, Lord, they see this for what it is, something that you are glorifying yourself through. And that in the midst of it, as I said earlier, us being in the palm of your hand, us knowing that there's nothing that can pluck us out of your hand. Now, Father, I speak your blessings upon your children in Jesus' matchless name. And amen. So let me just take a moment. If you turned, hopefully, like say in your Bible or on, turn on your app, went to the 91st Psalm, I want to share a few thoughts with you that you need to recognize tonight. When Solomon wrote this Psalm, we need to recognize that during that process of time, people were facing all kinds of trials and tribulation. There were circumstances that were going on on the face of the earth as they are today. So they were back then. And for some reason, Solomon felt that, you know, he needed to share with the nation of Israel at that time and anybody else that was sort of reading the psalm, a truth about God that brings peace that passes all understanding no matter what's happening in life. And so I think it's something that, you know, you should be able to relate to tonight and not only relate to, allow God to minister to you through, so that it truly, when we're done here tonight, you sense his presence. That his presence has literally filled the room where you're at. And in the midst of that, you recognize that you are in his palm, the palm of his hand, and he is in control. But in starting in verse 1, and I'm going to stop and exhort a little bit in between some of these verses, and share some thoughts with you. He, it almost said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide underneath the shadow of the Almighty. It makes me stop and ask a question. Am I dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? Because you see, it's in that place, if you're able to find that secret place, and that secret place could be a, a, a numerous amount of places, but it involves certain aspects of things. But who, they who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, they shall abide underneath the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to recognize what he's saying here. That when you find that secret place, that, fl that place of peace, rest in God, knowing that God's in charge of all that's going on in your life, that when, no, no matter when trouble comes, no matter what transpires, you will literally abide underneath the shadow of the Almighty. Could you imagine for a second in the midst of your life that you're getting ready to face some trouble? And all of a sudden you realize that you knew that God was there and all of a sudden those that were trying to come against you, they knew He was? that you're literally abiding underneath the shadow of God, well, that brings fear to the enemies of God. And that can bring peace to you and I. So the question or the, the reality of life is that you and I need to find that secret place and live to, learn to live underneath the shadow of God. There's things you have to do to accomplish that. I'm not going to get into the details of that tonight, but the point being is this. When you get to that place... Solomon went on and said, And I will save the Lord 
that he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him I will trust. When you are abiding into that place, when you recognize the peace that God can bring to you, no matter what's going on in life, that you are in the palm of his hand no matter what you're facing, all of a sudden you'll be able to say, no matter what you are facing, God, he is my refuge. He is my fortress. Not only is he my God, I can trust him no matter what's going on. When your personal relationship gets to that place and, you know, with you between you and God, when things come your way that are adverse, when things come your way that you don't like, when things come your way that seem to trouble you and, and you don't like what somebody says or what somebody does, those things don't bother you. Why? Because you know where you are and you find great peace in the midst of that. He went on and he said, surely you, you shall deliver, he, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the, pest, the uh, perilous pestilence. When you understand whose you are and you understand the relationship you have with God and it's all based on the reality of you dwelling in that secret place, in other words, get into that right relationship with God, God will deliver you from everything that the enemy sends your way. He'll turn around, keep the pestilence away from you, all the junk in life itself doesn't mean you're not going to have him come against you, but what it does mean that he'll keep you from it and he'll protect you in the midst of it. He went on and he said, he shall cover you with, with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrows that fly by day. In other words, no matter what's coming against you, if God be for you, who in the world can be against you? No one can. No circumstance can. So when you start to understand that, and it all stems from you pressing in to dwell in the secret place of God, find out whatever is in your life that hinders your relationship with God and keeps you from getting close to God, because trust me, God wants you to get very close to him. But when you want to get close to God, know this, that circumstances God is going to get out of your life that hinders you from getting close, that as you allow God to change you, and as you allow God to pull you closer to him, all of a sudden you're going to be dwelling in that secret place. And when you do dwell in the secret place, every benefit that God has becomes yours. He went on in verse number 6, he said, Nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall, fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Can I tell you again, if God is for you, there is nobody that can be against you. But for God to be for you, you need to be for God. You need to get your life where it really needs to be, that your life is not all about you, but your life is all about him living through you. So the question then becomes this, when people look at you, who do they see? You know, some people get mad when you stand on the Word of God because they don't like the reality that you're standing on God's Word. And because really when you're standing on God's Word, generally you're standing against the rebellion that they might be in. When that happens, they don't see you as being somebody who stands for the things of God. I've seen that happen too many times over the years. But there's one thing I know to be true, that when you're following God, you're standing on God's Word, no matter what comes against you, because you're trusting God, you're dwelling in the secret place. God will protect you. He'll go before you. He'll fight every battle that you have need of be having fought. And he'll find you the favor where it needs to be. So things will happen. Verse 7, it says, A thousand may fall at your side, as we said earlier, and ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Why? In verse 8, because you have made the Lord, who is your refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. When you have a made-up mind that no matter what's going on in your life, you're going to honor God, and your life is all about Him, it's not about you, you'll have people that are going to come against you. That's going to happen. Why? Because in reality, when, you step, when you're for God and you're walking where God wants you to walk, there's going to be things that are going to happen, things you're going to say that people aren't going to like. But nonetheless, as you stand for God and you're dwelling in that secret place because you're walking up right before him, God will go before you. He'll fight your battles for you and he'll find you the favor that you need. So that's a reality of life. 
He goes on and he says in verse number 10, No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, your dwelling. For he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the rock. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. When you set your love, your heart, your desires upon him, and you make your life all about him, that's when God himself will go before you. He'll deliver you. He'll set you on high. Why? Because you choose to know God's name. In other words, you choose to live for him and allow him to live through you. So, in verse 15, he goes on, he says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So, pastor, what are you saying? The simple truth of what I'm saying tonight boils down to this. Who's in charge of your life? Who is it that you trust? Mindful Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your pathway straight. Too many of us want to make our own pathway straight. Too many of us allow our emotions to get in the way. And because of our emotions getting away, because we think it, we think it's right. When in reality, some of the things we think is contrary to what God says in his word. But when we line up with what God's word says, that's when God goes before us. He fights our battles for us and brings us the victory we have need of in life. And in the midst of that, what happens as you choose to dwell in the secret place, all the benefits, all the blessings that you see from, from verse number 1 all the way through verse number 16, God goes before you and sees to it that they become yours. That's a great benefit of life. That's one of the great blessings of life for those who choose to walk with God and allow God to be God. So sort of in closing, and I know it's been a, a short time frame, again, not knowing you know, fully all that we needed to do tonight and how things would go. These are, these are powerful words from the man who God imparted great wisdom into, who we need to apply to our own lives. We need to apply his words. And in doing that, we need to allow God to transform our hearts. So the challenge I want to give to you tonight, as we all get ready to walk into tomorrow, not knowing what's going to take place, not knowing what the instructions our government's going to give us, not knowing that all of a sudden the gatherings of ten, you know, might drop down to five. They might drop down to the reality that, hey, the only thing you need to do is go out for groceries or whatever it might be. And again, I don't know. None of us do. But there might be things that we're getting ready to face. I'm not a doomsday person. Don't believe in that. But in the midst of it, what I do believe is that God's on his throne. He is in charge. He's got purpose for everything that's going on here. And we can trust him in him alone. And as we trust him, and we choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we will abide underneath his shadow. And as we do, he will go before us. He'll fight every battle that you have. You just got to learn to rest in him and trust him. So, with that in mind, I want us to close in prayer. And then when I want to, um, you know, give you instruction about this, this Saturday and, and the different things we got going on that are coming up. Uh, and then we'll sort of close again in, in the final prayer. But Father, I'm just asking that tonight, that you would take these words out of Psalm number 91. The words that you've spoken, you know, by your spirit through me tonight in expressing some of the things you want us to grasp a hold of tonight. You alone know what it is that we have needed of hearing from you tonight. You alone know the seed that you've been planting into our hearts and lives tonight. You alone know what our tomorrows hold because it's only you who holds our tomorrow. And in the midst of that, you know what it is that you want to accomplish so that we as your church, we as your body, will accomplish those things that bring glory and honor to you. I know that you love every single one of us. I know that you care for us. Even though we may not understand what's going on, we are in the palm of your hand. We are, the partner, the part, we are in partnership with you, and you are in the midst of accomplishing things that are great that will bring glory to your, your name. So Lord, help us 
to see what it is we need to see. Instruct us as we need to be. Help us to be in one mind and one accord. And in the midst of that, help us to accomplish what glorifies you and you alone. So I ask your blessings, Father, to rest upon these, your precious children. I ask that you direct our very thoughts and our steps. And in the midst of that, we will give you praise in Jesus' matchless name. So again, let me just sort of uh, say to you, I want to put up there on the screen, um, you know, as far as the giving of your tithes and your offerings, you can go on to the website, www.lifesource, there's two S's, dot org. Uh, go on to the bottom of the very uh, home page, click on that, it'll open up to another page, follow the instructions there, and you'll be able to take care of, you know, giving using a credit card um, or a debit card, whatever you want to do, or even PayPal is available also. And then if you want to turn around and mail it in, you need to do that, fine, you can do that. We're down here. We'll be down here Thursday. We'll be down here Saturday. Uh, we'll be down here live streaming Sunday morning. Um, you know, if you're one of the first maybe eight people, you might be able, we might let you in if you want to come in and live stream with us. Only going to let about eight of you in. Total, total number. Uh, but anyhow, you know, so it, it's all good. Um, love being with you tonight. Miss seeing you tonight. But in the midst of it, you know, hopefully we'll be blessed tonight in a special way. So let me give you some final instructions. Um, we're going to be meeting down here at the church this Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We have to, this Saturday, do the final moving, getting everything out. We have to restructure some of the areas that we have in storage right now. It's turned out to be able to make room for the chairs and all uh, and put them underneath um, uh, air conditioning and turn around and put our electronics underneath air conditioning. Some of the things that we have underneath air conditioning right now that doesn't need it have to go out onto another storage unit that we got that is not under air. So that means we have to move a lot of things around. So you say, well, what about groups of 10? Well, we're going to get you separated out, you know, into groups of 10, no more than that. Um, and, you know, we're going to be doing different things. Some will be working down here at the church. Some will be working over there at the storage unit. I'll keep you separated. I'll, I'll take a bullwhip out, separate you, whatever it takes, you know. If I have to hire a couple of guards, I'll do that too. But in the midst of it all, you know, we're going to have a good time. We're going to have um, food for you. We're going to have a time of fellowship in the midst of it all. And let it be a blessing. So please, come out Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. Uh, so that we can take care of what it is, because this really is the last push of accomplishing those kind of things that we need to. Again, want to mention to you Sunday service. going to be 10 o'clock, live streaming. Uh, we're going to have music, going to try to, you know, accomplish everything that we need to in a normal service. Uh, it'll just be downplayed quite a, you know, quite a bit. Uh, and hopefully, you know, uh, things are going to run, run smoothly. But this will be sort of the second time. Tonight was the first. Sunday will be the second time. We're going to be doing some adapting, so bear with us there also. Uh, but in the midst of it, I hopefully we're going to start to have a, a better time. On Wednesday nights, you know, next Wednesday night, I will start to do some teaching series uh, and some things talking about different matters. If you have some subject matters, things that you'd like to talk about, things you want me to share, Bring it to us, you know, te te text it to me, send it to me, whatever the case might be. We'll try to work it in. Maybe not the first week or so, but that, and as we go down the road. If you have prayer requests, text them to me. Text them to Sister Lucinda. Send it to my, you know, my email, pastor at lifesource.org. Send it to the church's one, lsc at lifesource.org. Any way you want to get it, call us. You know, whatever the case might be, we're here with you. You need me to visit with you? Of course I'll visit with you. And we'll take care of things. And one final word. Most of you know that Sister Dottie Cobeth uh, passed away this past week. What a blessed, you know, servant of the Lord. Someone I love dearly. Someone I was close with over the process of the years. She was a good faithful servant. Uh, she served the Lord well. She was one of my armor bearers in, in praying for, you know, for us here at the church and, and all that went on. She stood with us in many different ways. But the Lord in his infinite wisdom chose to take her home this week. And that's a blessing. Um, they're planning, <coughs> excuse me, they're planning a memorial service. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, March the 28th. It's going to be at 3 o'clock. It's going to be at Dobie's Funeral Home in um, Holiday, which is off of, um, can't think of the name of the street, but you look it up, you'll find it. It's the only one they have in Holiday. And it's going to be at 3 o'clock that day. Now, honestly, I'm not sure how many people they're going to allow to be there for it. I don't know what's going on there, um, but, you know, if you want to come out and be a part of it, hopefully they'll get things worked out till we can accomplish that, to honor her, 
honor her family that'll, that'll be here for it and be a blessing to others, okay? Again, I want to thank you. Again, if you have any suggestions as far as, you know, our, our Sunday morning, well, not necessarily Sunday morning, but Wednesday night services, teaching and all that, please call me. You got my number, and uh, we'll sort of go from there, okay? So let's close in a final prayer, and don't forget, please be here Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. Let's knock this thing out real quick. Maybe get it done in an hour, two hours, and be done and over. And, and it'll be just a great blessing. And we can get ready to move on. As far as where we're moving to, still up in the air. I don't know what to say to you. It's not because we haven't tried. Truly, we are trying with everything we have. Uh, but God's got something great in store. I know he's leading us wherever that might be. We're working on this one location uh, right now. Hopefully, once we, if we can get the contract worked out, uh, we'll be moving there. Uh, but that's still going to take a few weeks. So we'll be meeting either here live streaming or we'll be meeting at the church uh, that we've, you know, made arrangements to meet on, this, on Sunday afternoon from 1 to 3 and on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. So that's what we have going on. Keep in touch with us. Uh, you have prayer requests, send them to us. Uh, you need to stop by and see us. Obviously you can. We're going to be here until the end of the 27th uh, as far as inside here doing work and getting things done and um, going to be a part of that. So uh, again, let me just say if you have any special uh, thoughts as far as study matter, material and all, send it to me. I'll take it in consideration and we'll go forth. Because I want you blessed. I want us all together and I want us to be able to, you know, sort of have a good time in the Lord during this trying time. Amen. So let's have a final uh, word of prayer. And again, I want to thank you for being with us tonight. And hopefully you'll be blessed in the midst of it all. Father, once again, I thank you for these, your choice and precious children. I'm mindful, again, as I've said earlier, we are in the palm of your hand. We may not understand all that's going on. But truly, Lord, you've taught us that we don't need to know. What we need to do is walk in faith, trust you. And Lord, we are walking in faith, trusting you. But you're saying your word without faith, it is impossible to please you. We've got to believe that you are who you say you are, and that, Lord, you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek after you. Lord, we are diligently seeking after you. We want only one thing, that is your will. Lord, if there's any sin in the camp, if there's anything that's hindering your blessings from flowing, we're asking right now that, God, that you would, you know, forgive us of any circumstance and situation, uh, that you'd move in our behalf as only you can. You'd find us the favor that only you are able to, and that, Lord, we'd be able to walk up right before you in such a measure, in such a way, that truly we are blessed, but you are glorified. Now, Father, again, bless my brothers and my sisters. Glorify yourself all the more. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen, amen, and amen. And with that being said, church, you have a blessed day, a blessed evening, a blessed week. And we will see you Sunday morning, if not before then. Again, stop by. We're here. God bless you. Thanks for coming out and being with us tonight. Thank you, Brother Jimmy. Thank you.